Hey there, my name is Kazen and I'm so excited to get started on booktube. This is my brand new channel called Always Doing and I'm really looking forward to talking books with you guys and getting to know you guys and having conversations. So I'm going to start today with the new to booktube tag. This tag was originated by Trina over at Between Chapters, so I'll link down to the original video below and it's got 15 questions, so let's get into it. Number one. Where are you joining us from? I live in Japan. Number two, how old are you? I'm 35. Number three, why did you join booktube? So I've been watching booktube for years now. I am a book blogger. I've had my book blog for years as well. And I want to take that next step into the community. And I want to join that conversation even more than when I'm just commenting on other people's things. Four, what is the meaning behind your channel name? So one of my most problematic faves ever is Thomas Jefferson. I like his writing, don't like the slavery and all the other stuff I feel much, but one of his quotes from his writing is, it is wonderful how much may be done when we are always doing. And I love that quote. It reminds me that if I have a lot of things I want to do, that's perfectly fine. You can fit a lot into a day when you keep on moving. So that became the name of my blog, even though it's not very booky. And now it's the name of my YouTube channel, even though it's not very booky. Question five, what kinds of books do you read? So my reading fits into like three buckets. So the first bucket is nonfiction, the second bucket is romance, and the third bucket is all other fiction besides romance. So I'm going to start with the nonfiction. I love medical nonfiction, books about books. I like books that let me experience something that I wouldn't or couldn't experience otherwise. I also like me some true crime every once in a while. Just, it's a pretty random, I don't want to say random, but it's a pretty wide selection, a little bit of everything. My second bucket is romance. Now romance is what I read when I want to escape, when the real world gets a little tough. So the further away it is from my real life, the better. So I like historical romance, like paranormal romance. Whatever takes me out of my own head and takes me away from my own problems, I love very much. And the third bucket is all the other fiction. And there is a little bit of everything here. I especially like things that are plotty in one way or another. So. You, you know, science fiction, fantasy, some mystery, things that move along I particularly like. I do like some literary fiction as well. What I read is mostly adult. Um, there is some YA and some there's some classics thrown in there as well though. And the thing that will turn me away from a book faster than anything are the words multi-generational family saga. That's not my jam. Uh, neither is inspirational fiction, but almost everything else, you'll find little bits of everything on this channel. One thing that's important to me overall through all of my reading is trying to read as diversely as possible from with works by as many authors from marginalized communities as possible. So authors of color, authors who are Muslim or other marginalized religions, Hindu, um, of different sexualities, all of those definitions disability there's a whole bunches every year i try to hit 30 percent this year i'm over 40 i'm getting towards 50. i don't know if i'll make it but i'm gonna try number six who are some of your favorite authors i'm gonna cheat with this one i'm gonna talk a little bit about each bucket but for many of them it's going to be books more than authors first in nonfiction, some more recent favorite reads include a Simple Story, The Last Malambo by Lila Guerrero. It's translated by Francis Riddle and it's nonfiction from Argentina, obviously translated. And there is a competition every year for this Malambo dance and it's amazing. The guys, it's guys who do this competition work incredibly hard to win it and the prize is being forced to retire. So why would somebody go through this? Why would they do it? And that's covered wonderfully. And it's around, it's like 150 pages-ish. And I fell in love with it. On the medical nonfiction side, there's Extreme Measures, Finding a Better Path to the End of Life by Dr. Jessica Nuttick-Zitter. What's amazing about Dr. Zitter is that she is 
both an intensive care physician and a palliative care physician. So intensive care is where you're trying to keep people alive in the ICU no matter what. And the palliative care is helping people reach the end of their life in the manner they want. So having this dual perspective gives her a really unique insight onto what it's like to die a medicalized death about how we want to die ourselves. And because of that, it's not the easiest read in the sense that you're forced to brush up against your mortality quite a bit, but it's super important. And one more nonfiction book because I can't help myself. Hammerhead, The Making of a Carpenter by Nina McLaughlin. I, I love this book so much. So um, McLaughlin was a reporter at the Boston Globe and she was sick of her job. So she quit, not really thinking about what she would do next. So she looked on Craigslist and she found a listing for a woman carpenter who was looking for a woman assistant. And she applied and she ended up getting the job and becoming a carpenter. What I love so much about this book is it covers many kind of deep quote unquote topics through this very concrete thing. So she talks about working a physical job instead of working an intellectual kind of, you know, information economy type job. She talks about being a woman in this very male dominated space of the construction trades. And she talks about starting from knowing nothing to barely being able to put in a nail straight and working her way through proficiency towards mastery and what that process is like. It's a wonderful read. It was one of my favorite books the year it came out. All right, enough nonfiction, let's get to romance. Here, it's a bit easier to list authors. Tiffany Rice, one of my favorite authors ever, best known for her original Sinner series, although she does have some standalones that have romance as subplots as opposed to the main plot. I love that her work is sex positive and guilt negative. It's no one is ever made to feel shamed for liking the things they do in the bedroom. Quickly listing some other authors that I like. Uh, in historicals, there's Lorraine Heath, as well as Alyssa Cole. Alyssa Cole does contemporaries as well. I haven't connected with those quite as well yet. I am still have hope. But her Loyal League series about interracial relationships during the Civil War is a particular love. In Paranormal, I like Nalini Singh. I kind of late to the party with the Psy Changeling series. There's something like 20 odd books out now. I'm on four or five. I'm enjoying that. All right, and now on to fiction. This is turning into the longest question by far. But in fiction, we're going to go back to books and some series. So first, let's go with Seanan McGuire, who also writes as Mira Grant. Um, she writes um, science fiction fantasy type stuff as well. And under Mira Grant, it tends more towards I don't say horror, but scarier, you know, what's going on here type of sci-fi. I've been reading the Wayward Children series and really like it, liking it, and I'm actually saving that third book for when I, a literary rainy day. Um, oh, another author that I save for literary rainy days is Dorothy L. Sayers and the Peter Whimsey series. Peter Whimsey is a lord and he uh, solves mysteries in the 1930s. The audiobooks are amazing. They're narrated, at least the ones I listen to, are narrated by the actor that played Whimsy in a TV series. So he knows the characters. Sometimes it almost sounds like he's doing um, loving impersonations of his fellow actors in the audiobook and it works so incredibly well. One of the few audiobooks that I don't speed up at all because I want to catch every single nuance and accent. And now for something completely different, um, Signs Preceding the End of the World by Yuri Herrera, translated by Lisa Dillman. This won the Best Translated Book Award a couple years ago for a very good reason. It's incredible. The translation is amazing as well. It's one of those books where you read the translator's note at the end of the book. It's at the end. And like Dillman makes you realize all these other things that were deliberate choices and that maybe I at least I didn't notice the first time through and it made me want to immediately go back to the beginning and start reading again. Question seven, what was the last book you read? Um, London War Notes by Molly Panter Downs. She was a woman that lived in and around London during World War II and she wrote a weekly column for The New Yorker. Number eight, what are you currently reading? I am lucky enough to be reading some 
advanced copies. The book I'm in the middle of right now is called Fashion Climbing. It's the autobiography of Bill Cunningham. He was a phot fashion photographer for the New York Times. I'm liking it so far. Expect a more detailed review, hopefully, in the near future. Another book I'm reading right now, again, lucky enough for it to be an advanced copy. Thank you, Soft Skull Press. It's The Lonesome Bodybuilder. It's by Motoya Yukiko, and it's translated by Asa Yoneda. It's short stories, and I think there's one novella-length piece in there as well, and I'm loving it. I've been filming for a while. I'm losing light, but the rest of these questions should fall a bit more quickly, so let's go. Number nine, what do you use for bookmarks? I read mostly digitally, so don't need bookmarks. Number 10, show us your TBR pile. I read digitally, no TBR pile. But some books that are on the list, I have Grandma Gatewood's Walk, The Inspiring Story of the Woman Who Saved the Appalachian Trail by Ben Montgomery. And I have a romance lined up as well. It's Stripped by Zoe Castile. I'm excited for this one just because it's one of those crazy setup contemporaries that's just gonna be fun. Number 11, which do you prefer? Ebooks or physical books? Ebooks, every single time, practically. I have some issues of, with pain in my wrist and elbows and holding a physical book for almost any length of time ends up being painful, so I much prefer digital. The next question is hardcover or softcover. Basically, if the spine is well and truly cracked and it will hold, stay open at any page, that's the best book for me if I have to read physical. Owning books or borrowing books? Depends. For English language books, I tend to borrow first and then buy if I really like it. For Japanese books, I tend to buy first for a couple of reasons. One, I have an amazing used bookstore very close to me that makes getting books very simple and very cheap. Also, if it's nonfiction, it's probably something for work and something I'll want to keep as reference. So I'll just buy the physical copy so I have it. Number 12, what book or series got you into reading? So when I was a kid, I was basically the first person on the bus to get to school. So that meant I had an hour every morning to kill. And so right from the beginning, from first grade, when I had started riding this bus, I needed to something to do and I started taking babysitters clubs books with me. Number 13, how did you discover booktube? I'm pretty sure it was Simon Savage who's over at Savage Reads. I was listening to his podcast and following his blog and when he made the jump I followed him over and it's like oh right there's a whole reading community here too why didn't I think of that? What challenges do you think you'll face with your channel? So my job is variable. I'm a medical interpreter which means that I repeat everything you say in a language you don't understand. That's, that's the basic definition of my job. So when English patients come to our work at hospitals, come to the hospital, I'm the one who's communicating what they say in English in Japanese to the staff and the nurses and the doctors and doing the reverse as well. So if there are a lot of patients, if a lot of people are sick or in need of care, I'm working a lot. And if everyone's healthy, I don't work very much at all, and it can change very quickly. So on weeks where I don't have very many appointments, YouTube won't be a problem, BookTube won't be a problem, but on weeks where if I have a, you know, a patient who's getting surgery at my way far away hospital and I need to be there eight hours a day for a week, time is going to be an issue. And the last question, yay! Where can we find you? I'm most active on Goodreads and I have something like 600 reviews. Friend me over there, compare books, let's gab. I am also on Twitter and Instagram as ever always doing. I have my book blog as well. It's called Always Doing. Nothing if not consistent. So nice to meet you. Welcome to my channel. We've made it through my first video. Go ahead and subscribe so you can um, keep on seeing my videos and like, and leave a comment. Let's have a discussion, let's chat. I'm really excited to meet all of you. So take care, be well, and I will see you very soon. Bye.